Welcome back everyone, Maximum Effort. Recently, the entire main cast of the team making Deadpool 3 like Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, Sean Levy, the director, were posting a bunch of videos with Taylor Swift referring to her as a co-worker. So now everyone is wondering if she's going to be in the movie. There have been rumors about it for a while now, so I'll explain what's going on. This was the video of them together. Ladies and gentlemen, the Eras Tour continues. Taylor Swift is in the building, <laughs> here to check out the Jets and the Chiefs, but more specifically, obviously, Travis Kelsey. Um, there's another guy here that you might want to check out. Uh, let's go to Matthew Perry at MetLife Stadium. <laughs> A lot of you still confused, like, what is the association between Ryan Reynolds and Taylor Swift? This doesn't make any sense. But a lot of you might remember all the Taylor Swift Deadpool pictures from years ago. Their association goes back years, and obviously there are a ton of cameo scenes happening in Deadpool 3. Speaking of which, we're getting Loki Season 2 episodes later this week. I'll be doing videos for everything, so be sure to subscribe to get all those. My Episode 1 video I'll post on Friday. That'll directly set up what's happening in Deadpool 3. But if you have no idea why Taylor Swift would ever be spoken of in the same sentence as Ryan Reynolds, like what do these two people have in common? Why would Hugh Jackman also be hanging out with Taylor Swift? Ryan Reynolds has been personal friends with her since before the events of the first Deadpool movie. They go back that far, but they became friends because of Ryan Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively. She's the actual association. She was Taylor Swift's friend, and then they all just started hanging out like you normally do as couples, and Ryan Reynolds became friends with her too. That's also how we got all those pictures of Tom Hiddleston in Taylor Swift hanging out with Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Like, wait a minute, is this some sort of crazy Marvel thing that they're working on in the background? You might remember this from years ago. Tom Hiddleston just had a baby with his current wife, who is also the main villain in the Marvel's movie, so talk about a Marvel family there. But years before that, for like a brief hot second, he was just going out with Taylor Swift in real life. So that's why Tom Hiddleston and Ryan Reynolds were taking pictures together with Taylor Swift in Blake Lively. It's just a coincidence now that Loki is crossing over with Deadpool 3. Like the circle of Easter eggs is now complete. But years and years ago, Ryan Reynolds becomes friends with her. Then he makes the first Deadpool movie. It blows up. And that's how Taylor Swift wound up wearing the Deadpool costume several years ago. This was actually Ryan Reynolds' real-life Deadpool costume that he wore in the movie, and he just loaned it to her for fun. This picture was taken right after the first Deadpool movie came out. Like, that's why everyone went crazy. Like, wait a minute, is Taylor Swift going to be in the Deadpool movies now? What's going on? This doesn't make any sense. At the time, people just had made the connection through Ryan Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively. Like, oh, it's Blake Lively she's friends with. And she just happens to be friends with Ryan Reynolds because of that. Everyone wondered if she was going to show up in Deadpool 2 in a cameo scene. Obviously, she did not. At least, none that I spotted. You can rewatch that movie like 10 more times and tell me if you think you see Taylor Swift in the background somewhere. But they all continued to be close friends. Then the rumors about Taylor Swift having a cameo as Dazzler in X-Men Apocalypse started when the producer of the movie, Simon Kinberg here, posted this picture of her hanging out with the X-Men Apocalypse team while they were making the movie. There did wind up being a Dazzler Easter egg in the movie, like it was kind of a cameo scene. It was more of like a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing, blink and you'll miss it. But in the final cut, they cut it way down. When they were in the mall hanging out looking at records, Cyclops pulls out one of Dazzler's records and shows it to Sophie Turner's Jean Grey. The cover art for the album is an Easter egg for the Dazzler issue of the X-Men comics in real life, but it's not Taylor Swift as Dazzler on the cover there. So go back to that Deadpool 3 Taylor Swift video of them all hanging out together. Zoom and enhance in the background. You also see Sophie Turner here hanging out with them in present day. Like, wait a minute, what's going on with Sophie Turner? Is she going to be in Deadpool 3 now too? What I think was happening at the time is that Taylor Swift just became friends with Sophie Turner in real life while they were making X-Men Apocalypse or sometime before they started making that movie, and that's why she was hanging out with them, because she was friends with Sophie Turner. That's why in present day you see all these pictures and videos of Sophie Turner hanging out with Taylor Swift. And at least as far as I know, Sophie Turner's Jean Grey is not supposed to be in Deadpool 3. It's going to be Fonka Jansen's version of Jean Grey. But behind the scenes, all the Dazzler stuff just continues through the X-Men movies. So they get to the making of X-Men Dark Phoenix. They actually did Dazzler as a real character this time, but it was not Taylor Swift playing the character. You just see a quick scene of her singing at a celebration in the backyard of the X-Mansion, and that's about it. I don't remember hearing any rumors about Taylor Swift being in Deadpool 3 as Dazzler until recently. Like, it was all this stuff that just kind of set this off. There have been tons of reports about all the X-Men cameo scenes, the other classic Fox Marvel movie characters coming back. 
But at least right now, if even half the rumors are true, the Deadpool 3 movie is already super stuffed with cameo scenes. And for the most part, the biggest cameo scenes are supposed to go to those original X-Men movie actors like Jean Grey Phoenix, Halle Berry's Storm, James Marsden's Cyclops, Ian McKellen's Magneto. There'll be a bunch of others on top of that, and we know the TVA characters from the Loki series will be important to the plot, and Tom Hiddleston was also supposed to have filmed a couple scenes for the movie. So usually when I see crazier rumors like this, like Taylor Swift is Dazzler and Deadpool 3, I'm a little more skeptical, but the movie is gonna be legit crazy, so it wouldn't be totally out of pocket for them to reach for a wilder cameo like this, but I would not recommend holding your breath. Like, do not be surprised if Taylor Swift is not in the movie. What Ryan Reynolds might do is he might just borrow some of her music for the soundtrack and like that's the Taylor Swift association. Maybe in real life he films a really meta promo with her like he did during Deadpool 2. I also think part of the reason why the entire Deadpool 3 team was at that Chiefs game with her was mostly for fun because the actor strike was still going on at the time and it looks like that's going to be resolved in the next couple of weeks. The writer's strike just ended recently and they can legit start working on parts of the movie again like Ryan Reynolds can start punching up the script, the jokes, polishing everything. So most of them, except for Hugh Jackman, because he's not a producer or a writer on the movie, but like Sean Levy is the director, he and Ryan Reynolds can basically go back to work now. So they were all probably just having one last big fun outing before going back to work. And Hugh Jackman, like literally as I'm posting this video, also just posted a funny training video of him trying to get back in shape for the movie. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> because he also expects to have to go back to work and start filming the movie again by next week or so. Let me know in the comments, though, if you want to see a Taylor Swift Dazzler cameo scene in Deadpool 3. I don't think it would really affect the plot. I think it would just be a funny cameo scene, but it would definitely get armies of her fans out to see the movie. And they're definitely hyping up Deadpool 3 to be a billion dollar Avengers Endgame level movie. So they want everyone on the planet to go see this film. The movie's sort of going to be a Spider-Man No Way Home kind of film for those classic X-Men movies. The director, Sean Levy, also said they'd be heavily revisiting the legacy of the Fox X-Men movies during that film, meaning that they would be bringing back a lot of those characters. There's also rumors that he's going to be the one to direct Secret Wars because they're kind of doing the same thing with that movie, only with more cameos and bigger stakes. The actual Dazzler character is a huge deep cut from those old X-Men comics. Originally, the joke in the fandom was that in the early 80s when she debuted, she was created only for the purposes of selling more merch. Like, it was all just a marketing thing. Sell more Marvel merch, sell more music records. And they're not totally wrong about that. The character was literally created as a joint venture, like corporate synergy, quote unquote, between Marvel Comics and Casablanca Records, a music company. The idea was is that Marvel Comics would write stories for the character like you would normally do for comic book characters, and they would also create real-life albums as if the character were making their own albums. So you'd buy the Dazzler comic book, learn about her story, but then you'd buy the Dazzler album in real life, which cost way more money, making them way more money. Eventually, their corporate partnership ended, and Marvel stopped writing Casablanca records into the Dazzler comics, and she just became more of an actual comic book character. But it was an early example of Marvel trying to do these cross-platform media integrations across its comics. Eventually, they got better at doing stuff like this. Early on, the most famous example of this was just a few years later in the 1980s version of Secret Wars. It was kind of like Shadows of the Empire was for Star Wars in the 90s. Like, we don't have a movie coming out, but we want to sell a bunch of merchandise, so we need to create this giant crossover story with all the characters. So it was basically an example of Marvel doing a giant Avengers movie before they were doing giant Avengers movies. The whole idea is that you'd read the Secret Wars comic book and they'd sell a bunch of toys that people would run out and buy. It did wind up making them a bunch of extra money, so it was successful. In present day, though, movies have largely taken over this role. Like, where they release the Avengers Endgame, it's super popular, everybody buys movie tickets, but then the kids run out to buy the comics for the characters, increasing the sales of the comics. They buy the toys for the characters, making them way more money. Marvel has always typically earned way more money on toy sales than on comic book sales. There's all the other tie-in merch, so just generally, movies are like the central role in this money-making scheme that all movie studios have. It's not just Marvel, it's like DC, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, pretty much every younger focus giant brand. Barbie is probably the best recent example of that too, like literally it started out as a toy that they're turning into a movie, so it's kind of going in reverse. Deadpool has joked about this phenomenon in the previous movies, like just doing things to make more money. The Secret Wars movie is going to be kind of a combination of the classic Secret Wars with the more modern version, but Deadpool 3 is meant to directly set that movie up. The difference with Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty is that's mostly like the 616 main Avengers in the main universe fighting the Dynasty of Kangs, the Council of Kangs. 
Secret Wars is mostly going to be about the TVA saving as many people from the multiverse from the incursions as it collapses, putting them on a planet that will be their battle world that might wind up being the Void planet just because that makes sense. Most of the characters that the TVA saves will be from those other universes will be like the legacy actors from the Fox Marvel movies and the classic Spider-Man movies. For instance, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is supposed to be one of the leaders of that Multiverse Avengers team. So it's almost like they're doing a live action version of that Spider-Man the Animated Series Secret Wars episode. Like you have to picture Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man being the one to do all this, putting the team together. Now that most of the strike stuff has been resolved and people are actually making movies again, we'll start getting more footage from Deadpool 3. And once that movie comes out, we'll learn more about Secret Wars. Of course, I'll do more videos and we'll probably get some Easter eggs for that during the Loki Season 2 episodes. My full Loki Season 2 Episode 1 video will post Friday and my Ahsoka finale video will post next. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss those. Click here for that Ahsoka finale video and click here for that Loki Season 2 Episode 1 video. I'll update the links as soon as I post those. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and maximum effort.